Do you know birth control implants? Yeah, I do. I actually have one. No, no, no. This. No, I don't mean those. I mean <coughs> implants that <coughs> control birth control implants. So usually are some tiny plastics that usually contain a hormone and they are the size of a matchstick. So they usually inserted into your muscle and they usually release a tiny amount of progesterone, progestin. So that one will be what will be acting on your system to make sure you don't get pregnant. Now, like we talked about uh, the poor provera. Now the action of progestin is to mimic a situation where you are pregnant whereby you're not going to get your menses because once you get pregnant you're not going to see your menses because now your body will make sure you maintain the wall for the sustenance of the pregnancy the same thing will happen here we are tricking the body into thinking that you're pregnant so what usually happen is um, now the mucus plug in your cervix will thicken to make sure that there's nothing going in either a bacteria infection that can cause an infection or a sperm in case maybe you so happen to have met your partner in case you so happen to conceive during this period when you have this implant it's very very important and very advisable for you to visit the your doctor so anyway this contraceptive implant might go for three to five years now three is the recommended is what is written but then we have studies showing that this can be effective even up to five years and this is one of the most popular one because now this doesn't give you the effects of the depo provela that you get and also it alleviates the fact that uh, when you're taking the pill the really pill sometimes you might forget or maybe you don't want to swallow something on daily basis so this might be a good thing because once you get that shot it will take you three years and an added another in case maybe you don't remove them and and it's not recommended it's usually very important for you to after three years get that removed and have another one being inserted um it can take you up to five years in case maybe you so happen to have forgotten or maybe in a place where you cannot be able to access a hospital for that to happen so unlike the pills this one will take you three years without having to do anything with your fertility so you are not going to take pills on daily basis and also unlike the provera you can remove it anytime that you want so yeah you kind of in, you're in charge so in case you feel that um, maybe you are having some side effects of the drugs you cannot be able to continue you can just go to the hospital have that removed they'll just make an incision there and remove it okay when it comes to now insertion what usually happen here is they they might apply a local anesthesia there and then there's a needle a special one that will be used to push that implant inside so you're not going to feel any pain any discomfort okay there might be some because now that needle is a little bit larger because now that much stick sized plastic will have to go into your uh, inside you and then after that then you're done after the pain goes then it's totally uh, it disappears but then when it comes to now removal they might also apply a local colonize this here and then an incision will be made and then it should be removed so once you remove that then uh, fertility comes back almost immediately but some few cases it takes a little uh, bit longer but this cannot be compared with depo provera which can take up to nine months sometimes even going to some years after you remove it to regain your fertility so this one is way better compared to depo provera now the several things you also need to understand uh, this goes for uh, three years and uh, it can extend to five years but then the recommended is three years now like i said something that really need to understand is um this one usually give you some slow and low doses of uh, progestin and this is what will act on over the time but then when it comes to the shot that usually get like uh, the proper way i keep giving an example of the same because this is the most commonly used and banned in some countries uh, in case you get that, you are getting a higher dose when it comes to now the, the shot, the, 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 that injection. Now, the implant will give you tiny doses over a long period of time. This other one will give you a lot of that within a short period of time. And in case maybe you start reacting to Depo Provera, there is no coming back. You'll have to wait until the effects wears off after those three months. And uh, then from there, you can decide on another alternative. But then when it comes to the implant, you can be able to, in case you find that there's something wrong or there's something going on you can have that removed and then uh, you can just uh, try to look for the alternatives so this is an advantage when it comes to that now uh, like we mentioned fertility usually is regained faster compared to now the depo provera and others okay the same case can happen to even the pills but now the pills you'll have to take that on daily basis anyway we have several people who cannot be able to use this in case you are pregnant make sure you avoid this as much as possible like we said it can contribute to you getting complicated pregnancies and also um you can be prone to blood clots yeah so if you usually have issues with your coagulation it's good to just avoid this ones and also if you have unexplained vaginal bleeding now 
if you don't actually know the cause of uh, your bleeding, then uh, first of all, stay away from uh, contraceptives that are hormonal. Go to a doctor. First of all, get to know exactly what's going on. And then from there, then you can know exactly what to move on from. Now we have people with cervical cancer or those who are allergic to the contents of this implant, including the plastic. In case you have an allergic reaction to that, then can be bad for you. So it's good to make sure that you don't have enough of that before you procure this one. Now we have several side effects. We've talked about the advantages. By the way, this is one of the most popular methods people usually prefer compared to using the shot, compared to using the pills and uh, using the emergency pills. So it's one of those. Emergency pills are emergency pills. They are not uh, for long-term use. So just make sure you don't use them for a regular control of birth. Now, we have side effects. The first one is, um, okay, not side effects. Let's say I'm going to combine them like side effects with the risks. Now, sometimes uh, it can lead to some people getting ovarian cysts. Yes. Now, remember we talked about not ovulating. So if you're not having that ovulation, it means that now that egg will have to remain in that ovary. And we might have people being affected by this because they might end up accumulating a lot of those cysts and then they kind of transform to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now we have weight gain and this is usually, even we mentioned this when it comes to Depo Provera. Now, uh, you might gain weight. And we, you know the reason why? Because now we trick the body into thinking that you're pregnant. So mostly, even when you observe, majority of the people when they become pregnant, they usually add a lot of weight. This is mostly due to progesterone. And this is one of the reasons why you're going to gain weight when you start using this implant. Now, we have others, a tiny percentage that will lose weight. This is kind of an outlier, but it's possible to get that. We have nausea. I remember... Like we said, once you get pregnant, there will be those symptoms like uh, the morning sickness. So some of that will be bought into now this, what the implant after you start using the implant. We have nausea. We have frequent headaches. Now, for the frequent headaches, this is mostly due to the expanded volume of blood. Now, remember, once you become pregnant, your body will have to like, it has a tendency of increasing the amount of blood that you have. So the blood volume will increase the pressure that you have. And this pressure will create that in the head. And we have other risks like um, the implant getting into the blood vessel. Now that can block the flow of blood and this can lead to the issues that comes with that. Now we have damage of the nerves. In case that when they're inserting that, they kind of come across the nerves and that's damaged. That can lead to you now the issues that comes that now maybe the nerve was connecting to some of the uh, the fingers that you have here. You might find that they are they are not good. They are not functional because now the impulse cannot get all through. Or maybe the motor neuron that's coming from the brains or uh, the spinal cord going all the way to the muscle is one that was damaged. So meaning that you can be able to feel the effect. Uh, but then you cannot be able to move the mass away from that. So that's why sometimes, by the way, this is a by the way. You might find that people, like, for example, those with the disorders when it comes to their motor uh, neurons, you put your finger somewhere hot, maybe it's a stimulus which is nasty, but instead of now pushing or maybe pulling away from uh, the, that whatever is causing you to feel the discomfort, maybe you end up pushing it inside. So uh, disorders, maybe you might look about them in the future in an anatomy session, uh, okay, maybe. So we have introduction of infection. This is a risk. In case maybe uh, during the insertion of that, there was no aseptic technique that was used. It might push some of the bacteria that you have on the skin inside. And some of them are staphy, staphylococcus and streptococcus. Streptococcus are not mostly on the skin. They're mostly in the, the upper part of the respiratory system. So the staphy might create some issues when it comes to your skin. You have lower sex drive and this is mostly because of the hormones that you are of course, you don't have as much of that estrogen because now, after you start taking progestin, it inhibits the production of uh, estrogen because now the estrogen will be the one that will be responsible for demolishing the wall. That's what usually make you get the menses. And because you don't have that, then it means that you're going to um, have less of that estrogen, which gives you a good sex drive and also uh, the vaginal dryness. And this one, this is due to estrogen. You have less of that, so definitely it gives you the same. So in case you are benefiting from this, you know what to do. See you in the next video.